Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel and for so many likes. The first story, manager tried to send me home to avoid paying overtime because activity got delayed, got outplayed by his own choice of words. The second story, an entitled wealthy man didn't pay for electricity and got some very stinky fish. The third story, guy is constantly late for work, so I gave him two of my shifts. On to the first story. Come back during night shift, stay whole shift if you believe delays are not too long. Setting, I was working in a top Asian brand factory in the engineering department. One of my main and many tasks was giving support to production with new models and also training staff when product rework was needed. At this point, I'm a year into my engineering position and am sick of my work environment as it was hostile in many ways and was common for me to work 65 plus hours almost every week. Overtime was paid, this is relevant later. For reference, my work schedule in paper was 5 work days with 10.2 hours each day, including breaks and lunch, but I ended up also going most Saturdays and staying late on weekdays also. The story, one Friday morning my team manager Jeff, not real name obviously, requested me to go home and return during second shift because there was rework needed on some product and they needed two members from our team during said rework. Jeff's instructions were as follows. Go home, get some sleep, come back at the beginning of second shift, give rework instructions to staff members, supervise until they finish, and then send me a report with the outcome via email. Stay overtime if needed. Simple enough, I just asked about my morning hours, and he states that the time I've worked that morning would be added to my overtime hours, and that I work second shift as normal hours, from 7.30 p.m. to 4.20 a.m., and to stay longer if necessary to ensure everything was okay. Paid overtime also. This whole exchange was done verbally, but in front of the department manager, so no worries. After talking to me, he went to a coworker, we will call him Jim, to ask him to also do the same as me. Cool, we agreed, and I clocked out at exactly 10 a.m., 2.5 hours into our shift, and then head out to the parking lot. Jim stayed two more hours due to another pending issue. Here comes the first problem. I go out to the parking lot and it's pouring, like Jumanji flooded house pouring. I get to my car and it's blocked by many other cars, parked in prohibited positions. We were having big issues with this, not enough parking space, and can't get out to head home. I return to the security guard's post to get out of the rain and call Jeff. He doesn't pick up, was in a meeting or so he says. So I call my supervisor Brad instead, telling him that I can't leave due to the parking issue. Minutes pass and Brad comes to the parking lot and has a little flash of genius. He sees his car is not blocked and proposes we switch cars and exchange back on Monday. I agree and go on my way back home, somewhat tired, hungry, and soaking from all the rain. Second problem occurs. The day passes and I head back to the factory just in time for the second ship, only to find out that rework will start only after 11 p.m. due to some production delays. For me, it's cool. I get time to do other pending work. As the hour draws near, the product that needed rework was not ready, nor would it be ready by 11 p.m., so Jim called Jeff, told him the situation, to which he stated, if you believe beginning of rework delays too much, go home and please come back on Saturday morning. No additional comment was given from us. We just agreed and he hung up. Jeff was a fan of people following his instructions to the letter, and as you can imagine, this new statement peeved off the both of us because Jeff was trying to avoid paying overtime for us just waiting idle and not doing this task, even though we had more activities to do anyways. Also, he was very known for having a silver tongue, for making promises and getting out of them for petty reasons. Happened to me already. And I also was kind of annoyed because of the parking lot incident that morning. I lost like 45 minutes in the rain just trying to get out. At the moment, I only had 2.5 clocked hours in the morning and three more into the evening. Meaning that even though he said those first 2.5 hours were overtime, I knew that wasn't in writing. So the next five or so clocked hours of Saturday morning would not be overtime. And if I didn't go, I wasn't going to have the total regular hours needed that week, and that HR would just deduct them from my overtime hours. At this point, Jim and I looked at each other, and I asked him to repeat what Jeff said on the phone. Cue malicious compliance. Jeff said, if you believe, meaning that his words gave us free will, and we were going to follow his instructions to the letter. We were told by staff that at midnight rework process would start, and at 10 minutes before midnight, they would procure the people for us to train. We believe this wasn't a big delay, so we roll the dice. We train the staff, but product was delayed again. When we asked for a new ETA, it was 1 a.m., 
That was perfect. Again, we believed it wasn't a big delay. By the second time we asked, the production supervisor got wind of what we were doing and played along. These 30 to 60 minute delays continued until 4 a.m., when finally rework process started, but we only had 20 minutes on shift, to which I remembered the first instruction Jeff said, supervise until they finish and stay overtime if needed. So us being the model employees, we complied. Rework was done by 7, 10 a.m. Jim took off as soon as we finished. He had worked more hours in the morning. Just as I was sitting to make the report and send it via email, per request, Brad arrives for his overtime shift and was peeved off when he learned we didn't go home and started until 4 a.m. and called Jeff to let him know the status of both Jim and I. I explained to Jeff via phone about how we complied exactly how he told us to and that we were given small delays each time that we didn't believe to be too much. I also told him that Jim already left to sleep, but I could stay if he needed me to. Jeff was not vengeful, just a pain to work with, so nothing bad came out of this. He saw that I had outplayed him in his own game and with his own rules, so he admitted defeat and told me to clock out for the weekend and come until Monday. I got my normal hours plus extra six hours after that whole thing. Bonus, I exchanged back cars with Brad that same Saturday morning instead of Monday, which was nice. Oh, and the rework that was done that Friday night had to be redone again on Sunday because someone unrelated to us messed up and Jeff had to go himself to supervise because no one was available from our team. The next story is, you'll just have to shut my power off then. Part 1. Many years ago I had an in-between job at a call center, working for the state regional electricity supplier. Turned out that I was reasonably good at my job and was promoted to team leader, which translated to, you get all the SH calls that other reps can't handle. In my part of the world there are many regulations on how and when you can disconnect someone's power. Amongst other things, they have to be sent three notices first bill, late notice, and final notice. If they ask for an extension, you have to give two weeks automatically and another two if there's hardship. Any excuse is hardship, but the customer doesn't have to request the additional two weeks. Payment plans have to be arranged at customer request. You don't have to fur the credit department contact to arrange a plan. And a plan means you won't get disconnected. We had customers paying $10 a month for years while steadily accumulating more bills. A refusal to make payment automatically escalates things, such that the last notice received is a final notice. This is important later. Anyways, Dave rings up. Dave is apparently a keen fisherman with a tiny little 20-meter yacht and a vacation home just south of one of the major tourist locations. Dave has a problem, and the poor service rep has had to escalate the call to me because Dave has been expressing his opinion of our company quite forcefully and pungently. Me. Hi, Dave. This is me. I see from our service rep that you've received a final notice of payment due. Dave, your effing company didn't effing send me any notices. How the f can I have a final effing notice? Me, I understand your frustration. We have your address on record as XYZ property. Dave, that's my effing beach house, you stupid f wit. How the f can I get mail there when I haven't been there for four effing months? Me, Dave, I understand this is stressful and upsetting, but I need to ask you to moderate your language, please. Dave, I'll effing moderate my language when you C's sort this SH out. Why the F didn't I get notices before? Me. Checks account history. Ah, I see what's happened. When you signed up for electricity at XYZ property, you indicated that the mailing address was the same as the supply address. Then you called two weeks ago to update the mailing address to ABC property, which is the same as your other account. Dave. ABC address is my effing home, mate. That's where all the mail should go. Me. We'll certainly send all mail for both accounts to ABC address from now on. Now, can we discuss the overdue bill for XYZ address? Dave, it's not overdue. You F-wits didn't send me a bill. Me, I'm sorry that you feel that way, Dave, but the bill was sent to the mailing address for the account. Now, I can offer an extension of the due date of two weeks to give you more time to pay. Dave, F off. You C's F'd up, so you need to send me a new bill at the proper time. Me, Dave, you've received three notices to pay. This bill is six weeks overdue. I can't reset the billing timer because you've received those notices. Dave, F you, I'm not paying this then. Me, Dave, I must advise you that under the Electricity Act, it's an offense to refuse payment for electricity. That's grounds for disconnection of service. Now I can offer. Dave, you effing SHFCF features, I'm not paying this BS notice. Me, I have to warn you that your power may be disconnected for non-payment. Dave, go F yourself. You'll just have to shut my power off then. Click. So I put notes down summarizing the call and advising that the customer refused to pay the overdue bill. As per procedure, the entire account was forwarded to collections. 
who given the lateness of the bill and the customer's refusal to pay, shut the power off within 24 hours. And that was that. Honestly, I don't know. I think it's similar to the sovereign citizen's stupidity. He thought he'd found a loophole or something. Part 2. Dave's back. Nearly a month later, Dave has escalated to me again. I can read the notes on his account and see that he's recently paid his power bill. Me. Hi Dave, this is me. How can I help you? Dave. You C's can pay for new freezers, new carpet, and someone to clean my beach house. You shut my effing power off and my bait went rotten so my house is effed. Me. Dave. Your power was disconnected as a result of non-payment of your power bill. As a power company, we have no liability for property damage, except in the case of poorly installed street connections. As this doesn't fall into any of those categories, we will not pay for repairs to your property. Dave, I have $2,000 of bait here that's been uneffing frozen for an effing month. The missus can't even walk in the effing door. F you and F your entire company. I'll effing sue. Me, you're more than welcome to have your legal representative contact our legal department. However, I cannot assist you further. Dave, you little C, where the F do you live? I'll effing find you and effing wreck you. Me, I'm not required to stay on the line when personal threats are issued. I'm terminating this call. Dave called back several times that day until we managed to get a blanket hold on his account activity. No one was allowed to answer his calls except refer him to legal. And the last story is, let me know what I owe you, I definitely will. So this happened a while ago back in college. I was working at a gas station for cash under the table, as well as doing some side gigs, paying my own way through school. I worked with an irresponsible fellow we'll call Dave. Dave was also going to school, but on his parents' dime, so wasn't as busy, harried, or desperate as yours truly, just working for rent and beer money. Dave worked the graveyard shift, 12 a.m. to 8 a.m. I worked the shift before, 4 p.m. to 12 a.m. We didn't have a time clock or anything, and we just got paid for the shifts we were scheduled for. Well, Dave started coming in late, just 5 or 10 minutes most nights, but it really annoyed me because I wasn't getting paid for that time. He was. Finally, one night when I called his house at 12.10 and his roommate said he was still playing video games. He lived about 15 minutes away. I had it. I laid into him when he finally walked in the door, a full half hour into his shift. He put on the whole reasonable guy being confronted by frothy-mouthed unhinged co-worker routine, eyes wide, hands up, etc., and told me to let him know on payday what he owed me. I had considered going to the owner of the gas station, but then I had a better idea. I started keeping track of every minute he was late. Five minutes here, ten minutes there, sometimes fifteen or twenty a week. Weeks went by, and I'm sure he thought he was off the hook. I was being really nice, telling him to take his time getting in. No rush. Then the week before finals, I walked into the store when he was covering a day shift for someone, pulled the schedule off the wall and handed it to him. Which two shifts do you want to take, I asked. He looked at me funny, and then realized what I was saying, rolled his eyes and reached for his wallet. No, 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 leave your wallet where it is. I don't want your money, I want your time. I handed him the graph where I had meticulously recorded every minute he had been late. You owe me 16 hours, two shifts, pick them. Dude, it's the week before finals, he whined. I told him I didn't get to pick which nights he came in late, so he didn't get to pick the week he paid me back, unless he wanted me to hand the graph to our boss. He didn't. I had plenty of time to study that week. Ace the finals. Why didn't he just say no? I think it was mostly because he was a decent dude at heart, just lazy and irresponsible, and realized he was being a D. I sort of expected him to fight me harder than he did about it, and he was on time after that. Thank you for watching, have a good day, and don't forget to subscribe.